Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Pierre. This is Simplify Brew. Been a long time since I've done a brew. I'm doing a recipe from Valley Hydroponics and Homebrew. These guys invented this recipe. Yeah, well, probably not. They're copying a taste. It's a recipe pub series recipe kit. Uh, the guys down there created this kit themselves. Uh, it's a great northern. I don't mind a great northern. Uh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good little beer. So I don't know what's in it. it cost me 35 bucks and I'm hoping there's stuff in it that's worth 35 bucks. We'll open it up, shall we? Before I get started, I want to welcome a new Patreon member. Thank you very much, Rob Lee. Appreciate your support. Rob Lee is, actually doesn't live far from here. He has been supplying me with bottles of whiskey, just saying thank you for all the videos I do. And uh, yeah, really, really appreciate it, mate. I would also like to throw a shout out to another subscriber who's just made himself known. He's been a subscriber for a few years and watched a lot of my videos, what I can tell. And just out of the blue, I got a message from him and he said, I have a, pro a, um, a gift coming from Amazon for you just to help you with your brewing time and I really appreciate that Paul thank you very much um, left a little note to say what he's uh what he's doing why he did it and you know he got a little like a presentable bag if you guys are interested and what he sent me was this it's a little scale now I've been looking to see if I can find a precise scale something that's not so buffy as the one I use for my grains because I've been trying to use the grains scale to measure my salts out and it hasn't been very accurate it's been very hard to measure it out and paul just out of the blue and i've only just started recently looking for one of these said i've got something you might be able to use and sure enough he exactly he sent me exactly what i've been looking for which is a little mini scale um it's from amazon of course but good enough this little bloke is going to make my world um basically all my measurements hang on i'll just peel this tape off here there's this blue covering it needs to come off and I thought oh well I'll share that with you guys here some people like this I don't know why some people like it <laughs> I'm not one of those um, so yeah little stainless steel pad uh, it's gonna measure my my uh, grains out not my grains it's gonna measure all my salts my hops, things that are really light and it's very precise. Looking forward to using it. I have an all grain coming up and this is gonna become very handy for that. Cheers, Paul, thanks for the gift. Really appreciate it. All right, so we'll get, so we'll get stuff out of the bag. It's gonna be like a bloody McDonald's wrap. Hang on. Instructions out. We got body blend, multidextrin and dextrose, one kilo. Let's see how much of what's in there. Yep, it's just like a McDonald's thing. You can't get your thing out. Uh, hang on. All right, we've got lager. So it's an Australian lager, Morgan's Australian lager. So I've got a Morgan's kit. Must be a Morgan's kit. What else is in here? I've got oh, a hop sock, a hop bag. Nice. And some California lager yeast. Awesome. So I'll get the instructions out and we shall figure out, nothing left in there, we shall figure out how we're going to actually brew this. So I'm going to read the instructions, the guys obviously made something up pretty cool. Uh, basically Great Northern, uh, pour two litres of hot water into a bottom of a sanitised fermenter. Now my experiences are to actually put the dextrose in the bottom of a fermenter first then pour the hot water on top of it, uh, if your fermenter can take hot water. Um, I'm wrong. <laughs> um, actually, it says pour two litres of hot water into the bottom of a sanitised fermenter, add hops and steep for 10 minutes. Uh, remove the hops and add fermentables. Mix well. So we're going to need to steep our hops. We can do that. We can do it the old way. I oh, will do that. Anyway, we'll get there. Uh, fill a 23 litre Fill to 23 litres of water and try to achieve a temperature of 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. I'll uh, pop the Fahrenheit here for you guys who are interested. Uh, fill, uh, sprinkle yeast evenly on the surface of the brew and put the lid on. Allow to ferment at constant temperature of 18 to 22 degrees. I should be able to control that. Uh, we haven't had high temperatures here 
just recently, so hopefully my fermentation will go. I think the weather here at this time of year is going to be, well, this week is going to be below 20 degrees every day, so I reckon I can control that. Uh, when fermenting that the letter, fermentation is complete after achieving a stable final gravity of 1010. So, or below, of course, it's going to be a little bit drier. Uh, bottle or keg it and off we go. So let's start, this is pretty standard. Um, hopefully this one tastes really good. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to use my stainless steel fermenter. It is clean as a whistle. I scrubbed it not long ago and it's been sitting here waiting for me to do a brew. So I'm really looking forward to using it again because I like it. Uh, by the way, it's a Apollo Titan from Keg King. Uh, it's a brilliant little system. They are promoting it a lot, but it is a great little little fermenter as such. Here's one thing I have to do. I've got mechanics gloves that I use. These are on mech gloves I get from work. I work at Autobahn, guys. Um, basically, I have cracked hands from all the chemicals I've worked with in, in food service system when I was younger, and it's just ruined my hands over time. So I'll put on some nitrile gloves, which are neutral, and I can brew all day long without sanitizer eating away at my skin. Guys, if it grosses you out, sorry, but this is what it's all about. You know, get a look after yourself too. So what I've done, my fermenter is ready to go. I've just put sanitizer in it. It's ready to go. I need to put the lid on and get that sanitized as well. That's clean. And sorry guys, I know you can't see. I'll just pop this lid in. Just want to do it so I can get it ready. Unfortunately, what I'm going to do with this, I'll just check for leaks. It doesn't leak. It's awesome. Um, what I do, what I'm going to do, these handles, they rattle and they drive me absolutely batty. I'm going to put some silicon uh, or something on there to stop that hitting all the time to make it a little bit more or more sanitary. No, keep me sane. <laughs> See what I mean? Right, so now that's sanitized. The border is boiled. <laughs> the water's boiling. It's two liters in the kettle. I've actually measured two liters into the kettle. They say to pour it straight into your fermenter, which is my one to stay in the steel fermenter, so I can do that. Fully sanitized. I'll pour the sanitizer out just before I do it, and I'll drop the hops in to steep it for 10 minutes. I'm also going to boil the kettle and soak the extract, which is the Morgan's Lager. Australian lager for it's about 10 minutes to try and uh, soften it up with, with warmth with heat it's not warm here it's it's 15 degrees Celsius it's pretty cold at the moment uh, it is mid spring or start of spring we've had some hot weather now it's gone to cold again we have storms coming right now so if you hear them don't stress it's just what happens alrighty so the kettle's nearly boiled my camera is nearly charged I'll quickly fill up this sink actually I might do that I'll get a bucket or container where are they there can't use it can't use it I had one I'll just pour hot water in the sink and I'll soak it in that it's all good so I crack the lid in the lids there's always some yeast I'll keep it I'll put that in the fridge I'll pop this in hot water for 10 minutes and try and soften her up. I don't know if you guys have watched my videos in the past. I've been using GoPros to record with. I'm trying a couple of the cameras I've had for a long time. I've never really used them to record all the videos with. Um, I'm still gonna use GoPro at 4K, but I'm gonna mix these videos in with it. Um, I'm hoping I get the right angle so you guys can see what's going on. You can see in the sink there, oh my god. So this is the first batch of hot water. I'll pour that in here just to get a bit of heat going on. That was way not enough hot water. Uh, I think it'll be all right. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. I'll leave it, I'll just boil into another batch. <laughs> You learn, right? Jeez. Right, we'll pop the, pop the water on. Oh, 
I'll get this kettle boiled again and I'll start again. And in the meantime, I'll tip out the sanitizer back into my container of sanitizer. And we got seven there. Eight. Two litres. Perfect. Turn the power off. Pop the kettle back on. Right, pop that over there. Turn her on. Right, we'll let that boil and uh, we'll get back into it. Okay. What I have found with these things is they're, they're a little bit hard to empty from the base. So what I'll do is I'll take the bottom off. And I'll just empty it straight into there. Just like that. That way I've got most of the sanitizer out. You know what? I haven't been here for a while to do this. I have no idea what I just said then. <laughs> I haven't been here for a while to do this. And I can't find my sanitizer spray bottle. Okay, I found it. I actually put it in the fridge, in the kegerator in, inside. Because, you know, I like to look at things and keep, uh, keep everything with everything. Okay, so I've set up this hose. This hose is um, a new hose on here. You, you probably can see what I'm doing here. Just want to make sure that is fully sanitized and sprayed down. I'll do the other side as well. All right, smells good. We'll pop that in there. That's just going to stay in there to keep it all completely kosher. And I'm going to now grab my boiled hot water. Actually, I'll reboil that. Turn this camera on. So here's the boiling hot water. Uh, the kettle's over full actually. I'm gonna pour that in. And do what they said basically. Now you can't do this on plastic fermenters. You will melt your fermenter, so don't do it this way. You can do it into a little bowl maybe, hot water. Leave it soaked for 10 minutes then pour it into your fermenter when you've done your cold water addition. So this is it, a little hop sock in a little bag. This guy's surprised. Now, the time is about 3.02, I need to leave it for 10 minutes soaking in there, that's in. I'll just let it soak in there for 10 minutes. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to start opening everything else up so that uh, we can get it ready to pour in. I will have to get some more hot water just to rinse out the actual tin with, which it rinses so much better with hot water, I can tell you. So I'm going to do that as well and get it ready and we'll pour, pour the dextrose in. Actually, the first thing we're going to do is pour the dextrose in, then we'll pour the extract in, and then we'll rinse the extract container, and then fill it up to 23 litres. At the moment, I've got two litres in there. I need to add another 21 litres to make 23 litres. I'm going to set my little Kegland fillometer. Link in the description. I have an affiliate link. If you're looking for one, click on that, and uh, you'll make my little brew channel grow. Cheers. So we've got our little bottle of extract bottle little bag of uh, dextrose. This young fella in here sitting in hot water trying to soften up and uh, I think I'll open, I won't open that yet, I'll open it when it's ready to pour. I will now grab a bottle I can open up. Do you know how majorly disorganized I am in this one? Quickly rinse this. This, uh, this, this can opener here, whoops, scratch the face was actually in our kitchen drawer, which wasn't meant to be there. Um, my wife must have borrowed it to use it for something, but nonetheless, we needed it. Okay, what time is it? It's five, five past. We still have, it's been, we still, <laughs> it's been only three minutes, can you believe it? All right, uh, yeast, we're gonna need that last. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need my tilt. My tilt is in a keg at the moment, which I don't wanna open, so, Looks like I'm going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to have to measure it using gravity. So I'll use that to measure the actual gravity, starting gravity, and then go from there. You know what I'd like to get one day? One of those wooden paddles that Bitter Reality Brewing have. They're, um, they're classy. They look good. <laughs> anyway, who really cares? Right, we're uh, 10 minutes... We've got three minutes, four minutes to go. Um, 
What else do I need to do to get ready? That's right. That's what I'm waiting for. I've got my tester. I have the dextrose almost ready, so I might start thinking about opening that up. Do that. The problem with opening these and pouring them into a hot water is the sugar gathers around the top as you're pouring it with moisture and when steam rises it sticks to it and becomes coagulated. So what happens is you don't get all the sugar in your in your brew. So I don't like doing it this way. I'd rather put the sugar in first then put the hot water in. But nonetheless, I still have to do this. So it's the only way to do it at the moment that I can. I could have steeped the hops in a cup, but 100 degrees Celsius, maybe I should have steeped it. I don't know. It, it says steep the hops at boiling water, in two liters of boiling water, first before pouring in your dextrose. So that's what I'm doing. I won't do it next time. I think I'll do it differently. Shouldn't make a difference. It should just make it just as good. Anyway, that's ready to go. I will not cut it open because knowing my luck, I will spill it all over the place. What we got? Got two and a half minutes to go. Yeah, playing with these cameras. The camera you can see me with is on a permanent power supply, but the camera I've got up here is on battery. And I went on a holiday just recently to Marimbula and used them. I didn't actually charge them back up and I've been using up all the batteries I've got and I've got just found one charged battery which should last me the rest of this brew. Alright, I've got one minute left. I will take the lid off. How am I going to get that out? It's at the bottom. Okay, I'll show you what I'm looking at. Down there, if you can see down there, there's... Oop, bog it up. You can see down there. You can see the little blighter sitting at the bottom. I've got to fish that out somehow. Okay. I'll grab my, it's hot water, so it's not a big deal. See if I can get it out. It doesn't seem to have done much as in greenery and everything, so I'll just quickly stir it. Like I said, it's gonna be steep for another minute. We've got half a minute left. That's it there, so. I think the hot bag might have, it's pretty solid. So I think it may have needed to be, I can't get it out. <laughs> I don't know if we extracted that enough. Okay, 10 minutes is over, so we'll get, get the bloke out. There we go. That can stay there. <laughs> I'll leave this in here, because it's hot water anyway. And I'll get this dextrose ready. I'm gonna cut the bag open. I might just cut the corner off, just like that. And uh, have it so it pours easily. And I'll just pour it in and stir at the same time. And I'll show you what I mean by coagulation in a minute when I get to the end of it. Yeah, that's what I mean. See, it's all coagulated at the end. It's not that bad, actually. We know a lot better than I thought. It usually gets really much worse than that. All right, stuck on my stick. Look at that, because it's a pain in the butt. Because my stick was wet, wasn't it? But it doesn't matter, that'll stir in later. Just quickly stir that in, not too much. So that's it, all stirred. I'm just stirring it up. I'm not gonna go nuts with it because I still gotta add the extract in there. So I'll do that now. Uh, the spoon will stay in there, and then I'll just keep going with that. Okay, the water's cooled right down now, so it's been a while. Um, hopefully it'll be thin enough. I've just plastic on there. I will quickly undo this. Can you see where from that? Yes, you can. With my cup bottle opener. I can opener. This is a really good can opener. Uh, it pretty much cuts in the seam and stops getting any sharp edges, so it's actually quite a safe working can opening for this sort of job. Okay, so that's done. Get a little lip holder, a little lip grabber right there. I'll just pop that over there. And it comes off just like a trooper. I'll just do that. Don't need to keep this. I used to worry about all that. I don't worry about it anymore. Now this bloke will now pour. I'll go in under the legs of the actual tripod. Straight in. 
I'm actually going to leave it there so it flows a bit. I'll leave it there for five minutes, just let it flow in. And while it's doing that, I'm going to start boiling another two litres of water so I can rinse it out into the actual pot and then we'll start filling it up with cold water. Now I've got to remember, I've got to measure the amount of water that's in that can, so I, or fluid that's in that can, so I know how much I put in because I don't have any scale, uh, I don't have any increments on my equipment to find out how much water or fluid I put in. So the only way to really do it is to measure the amount of extract that's in that can. It's probably 1.4 litres to be honest. It's pretty thick. We learn. Well, I don't. I've done this for such a long time and I still haven't learnt. Okay, I will put another two litres of hot water on and I'll start again, basically. All right, that's two litres. You can't see what I'm doing. You probably can from the other camera. We'll throw that on. At least we know it's two litres going in again. Not normally the way to do it. Uh, basically, I'm a bit... I've got to figure out a way to measure this out properly and do it right. Okay, so this has got some hot water in it. Now remember, I put tw two litres of uh, water in my kettle before I did this. So I know now that I've got four litres going in, plus whatever I put in this. I will pour that in, because I'm trying to rinse the container out. Just put more hot water in. Now, it's 100 degrees Celsius. It's very hot water. Um, I did grab it before and just realised I burnt myself, which is pretty stupid, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so I'm hoping to extract most of the extract out of the can. Oh, that should be fine. I'll use the can to, um, to fill the rest up. I can't see. <laughs> uh, I know I'm fairly far away from the actual camera, but you know. You know what I probably could do? Hang on, I'll make it a little bit easier for everyone. Is that better? You can see me now. <laughs> okay, I've cleaned that out fairly good. Um, just needs nut bugger all. Like I said, I need to use all the hot water up, which is a bugger because it's probably going to be too hot for the brew, brew now. I'm going to fill this guy up with cold water, filtered cold water, and pour it into my little measuring jug here to see how much, how much fluid that can actually takes. So I'll give this a quick spray with sanitizer. This is clean. Um, just want to sanitize it so we don't get any kind of bacteria in here because it is starting to get to the cold part of it all. Like I said, we've got four litres of hot water in there and one point something litres of extract at the moment with some dextrose. And then dextrose is fine. I'll fill this uh, jug up. I know I won't, I'll fill this one up. Whew, I burnt myself, would you believe it? Let's stick into it, Luke. Anyway. I'm going to fill this right up to the rim. What's my jug say? One litre, 50. So my jug says I've got 1 1.5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 1.3 litres. Then I'll make it four, 5.3 litres I've got in there plus a little bit of dextrose. Um, so I'll pour that out because I'm not going to put that in. I don't know why I sanitized it. And now we need 23 litres. So we now need to calculate that, which will calculate to what? 18.7 litres is what I'm going to need to put in extra on top of what I already poured in. What I'll do now is I'll tip my millimeter. So cleared, uh, I need to make it, what was it? 18.7 litres, 18.7 litres. So. That's seven there. So I'll go backwards, six, six, seven. And that would be eight. I'll go this way. So eight and then one. 18.7 liters. That's exactly how much I've got to put in my fermenter to have 23 liters. Well, I hope it's right. It's probably gonna be a little bit over. As we said, we've got dextrose in there as well. But uh, that's fine. Um, 400, for 300 grams or 300 mil of fluid is no problem at all. Now the good thing about doing this, 
is it aerates it. Um, I've got a filtering system into my system. If you guys don't know about it, I did a video, I'll pop a little link here. I've created a filtering system, just a basic one, but it takes a lot of the chlorine and chloramine out and a few of the bad anything else with, with our carbon filter and everything else. Works a treat. Uh, seem to get some good beers out of it and I'm really happy with it. All right, wait till it's full and uh, we'll get the yeast in. Hmm, got a problem. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> um, well, it might be all right. It'll, the foam will it'll, it'll dissipate. <laughs> Jeez, I've still got four litres to go. Uh, righto, I'm gonna put it on spray, hang on. Nope. 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 Yeah, wee, There you go. Let's reduce into bubbles. <laughs> How silly, eh? Three litres ago. I was hoping to get that. It's gonna be very uh, creamy looking, I can tell you. It's going to be very aerated, I can tell you that too. 16, so we've got... Oh, about one, about two litres ago. Nearly there. Will we make it? 17.84, we have one litre. Less than one litre. It'll beep in a sec, and we'll be done. Look at this, can I do it? Can it? Whoa. Yay, there we go. That's our 23 litres worth of fluid in there. <laughs> uh, bit funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you don't think of these things when you're filling it up, you think, oh, no. Because I normally put everything in last, uh, and it stops all this problem, because I do all grain a lot. And you don't think that you're going to have this issue, so what are you going to do? All right, well, I followed the instructions. All I need to do now is check the temperature, which I do have a thermometer here, so I'll grab that. Kindly donated by Mick Eade. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. Mick Eade is on the Facebook uh, group, uh, Simple Home Brew Group. He kindly gave me a couple of these wrapped systems. Uh, also available at Kegland. I'll put the link in the description. Affiliate link is available. Uh, hopefully you guys are interested. This is a wrapped Bluetooth uh, temperature gauge. And it will tell me what temperature my brew is at. In the room here, it's 19.5 degrees Celsius. So I will now spray this to sanitize because everything is well and truly low. And I don't want to get it, anything to contaminate this anymore now. So I'll unwind that, we'll throw that in there. Just to chuck the probe, whoop. We'll just chuck the probe in, see what temperature it's at. Right, we're at 25, 26, 27, yeah, 27 degrees Celsius. I realise I need a new battery in this. Do I wait? Pitching the temperature at this temperature is fine. Pitching the yeast at this temperature is fine. Yes, 27 degrees Celsius. Um, I'll show you guys. If you can see that, it's very, very hard to see because the battery is getting pretty low. Anyway, I can't show you. It's pretty bad. Um, I'm a deal. I must have left it running. So I'll have to put some new batteries in that. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to throw new batteries in that to make it worthwhile again. Uh, but we know it's 27 degrees Celsius. It's fairly high. Knew it was going to be that because I put double the hot water I was going to. It says here, uh, directly into the maximum of 23 litres of what? 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, storage below 10 degrees Celsius, 50. Storage recommendation. Oh, that's this thing. Okay, ingredients. Yeah, okay. So, basically, I might have to wait a little bit before pitching the yeast. It, it actually won't do it harm. It probably will work. Actually, I'm going to do it. I've done it before, and I haven't had an issue, and I will guarantee that I probably I will not have an issue again here. The only thing about pitching yeast at this high temperature it'll activate quicker and it might put some uh, dodgy uh, what do you call it? dodgy um flavors or, or sm smells in it but it's not 
that big a deal until it starts really starting to ferment. So I think I'll get away with it uh, because the temperature here is getting down and it will drop quite quickly, I would say. Now I'm gonna have a probe in there too to keep my eye on the temperature. So that's quite all right. Like I said, earrings sanitized. Big time sanitized. In this spray bottle I have put sanitizers. You guys that haven't seen this channel before, I basically make 20 liters of sanitizer using uh, Stalisan and well, I'm using atomic sanitizer. I'm not sure about the atomic sanitizer to be honest. It's a bit, it smells a bit compared to um, some of the other stuff I've used, uh, which is Stalisan. Stalisan is quite good. But anyway, I'll use this until I run out. Uh, and that's going to, uh, that's going in. Pop the lid on. Had the little floaty in there. That, that'll climb up to the top. Uh, before I put the lid on though, I do need to pitch the yeast, don't I? Now what I do when I pitch my yeast, I spray the yeast packet because people touch this. So when they pack your bags and everything, and because of the water temperature is below a certain temperature now, it's susceptible to um, <coughs> bacteria. Grab the scissors. Uh, you will have a chance of other kinds of bacteria or maybe just another yeast getting in there and destroying or making your beer do exactly opposite to what you want it to do. So even though this is dry yeast, I'm just going to sprinkle it in. Like I said, it's a bit high in temperature, but it will come down fairly quickly in this weather and we should be right. I'm not going to stir that. That's just going to stay in there like that. And as it settles, it'll start uh, activating. Right. Pop the lid on. And uh, that's just about it. I'm going to temperature control this. I do have a heating element over here. Um, I do have a fridge that does it too, but the temperature is going to be pretty low here. So I'm going to keep it at 18, maybe 19 degrees Celsius throughout this fermentation. The temperature in these, this part of the world at the moment for the next week and a half is going to be 16, 17 degrees Celsius. So we're going to be able to keep the temperature down, which is great. Um, I will put a heating mat under it for the night time so that it doesn't get too cold and that will keep it uh, That'll keep it at the right temperature as we go. That's it. I've uh, successfully created the beer now all I need to do is Wait seven days. That's all it takes seven. Maybe ten days. We'll see how we go All right, we'll see you when it's done. Thank you.